Glazing is a basic skill that all watercolorists can use. Today I'm going to show you how I made use of glazing when I painted this tulip. Glazing is simply the term used to layer a transparent wash over the top of another colour to modify the colour below. You can paint a glaze on small areas of your painting where you want to change the colour or value of something, or you can use glazes over entire sections of your painting to change or alter the mood. When you use a glaze on your entire painting, it can simplify things and create more colour harmony, or it can be used to draw attention to the focal point. In this tutorial, I'm not going to glaze a large section of my painting. What I'm going to show you is how I made use of the technique on small sections of my tulip painting. I made a quick glazing colour chart before I painted my tulip. I chose some of my transparent colours and the colours that I used on my tulip painting. I used a good quality piece of watercolour paper. This is Saunders Waterford paper. I'm going to show you how I painted this chart now and then we'll get on to the painting. I taped my paper to a board, I drew up a grid and then I wrote down the names of the paints that I'd be using on the chart. You could use tape to divide up the board if you want to but I didn't want to waste all my tape on this. And then I wrote the same colours along the top. I made a watery mixture of each colour and then I started to paint them in horizontally all the way across. All the paints I used were Winsor & Newton. This colour here is transparent yellow. This one here is quinacridone red and I used this is the main colour for the tulip. Permanent alizarin crimson. This is another colour that I used on the tulip. Permanent rose. This one here is viridian, which is the green that I used on the tulip. Then I painted some hooker's green down the bottom. Then I dried them all with my hair dryer and I started to paint the same colours vertically in their rows. This one here is transparent yellow again. I've got a bigger brush now because my column is wider. I can do it in one brush stroke, which saves me from fussing too much. So here I'm glazing over the other colours. I'm using a transparent wash to paint over the other colours. And doing that changes or alters the colour below. This one is permanent alizarin crimson. And then I went all the way to the end. So that was French ultramarine, viridian again, and some hooker's green up the end. When it dried, I used a black marker to outline around the blocks of colour themselves so that I could see them better. Then I got my reference photo out. This is a photo of the tulip that I took myself. And I started to have a look at those petals. Overall, the colour of the tulip is a pinky red, but on some places I can see more of an orange colour showing through. So here, for instance, on this back petal, I can see that the main colour is pink or ready pink, but there's also these orange sections. I had to think about how I was going to paint them. I didn't want to use too many colours. I wanted to use a limited palette, and I knew that I wanted to use quinacridone red as the main colour for the tulip. But how was I going to introduce that orange hue that I see on the petals? I knew I needed yellow, because the tulip has got some yellow on it. I thought I could put the yellow underneath quinacridone red to create those orange areas. Here on my chart, I could see the color that the glazing technique would produce when I used those two colors together, and I thought that that would work okay. I can keep this now and refer to it in the future, and I can make other charts with different colors when I need them. Here's a couple of tips for you when you glaze colours. Number one, 
Use clean water to make a runny puddle of colour. You want clean colour, not colour that has been muddied with other colours. Number two, use a soft brush and be very gentle with it because you don't want to disturb that underlying layer. Number three, use the wet on dry method where your paint is watery and your paper is dry. The underlying wash must be completely dry, otherwise, as I said, you will disturb it and end up in a mess. And number four, don't put the glazing colour on too dark. You can always paint another layer if it's not dark enough, but it's too difficult to correct it if you put it on too dark. Okay, now I'm going to show you how I use this technique on my tulip painting. This is painted on Arsh Cold Pressed 640 GSM watercolour paper. This is really heavy paper. It doesn't need to be stretched, but I did stretch mine because it has a tendency to get waves in it and I prefer to paint on flat paper. I've painted in some of the yellow markings that I see on the tulip. Now I'm starting to paint in this petal at the front. On the left hand side I can see an orange glow on that petal. So where I see that orange glow I'm painting this transparent yellow. That area looks more orange on my copy of the photo than it does here on the screen. So that's going to sit underneath my quinacridone red. Over here on this petal I also see some orange. So here I'm painting the transparent yellow on the area where I see it looks a bit more orange. As I said, this needs to dry thoroughly before I put the next layer of paint over the top. I'll get some quinacridone red now. When I get this, I mix a runny puddle for myself. So I mix some water with it. My yellow completely dried and now I've got my quinacridone red and I'm painting that over the top. Quinacridone red is a transparent colour. I'm putting it on lightly. I'm not painting a dark heavy wash over the top. It's got water mixed into it and you can see that yellow glowing through. And it's created an orange colour. I said earlier to use the wet on dry method when you paint a glaze over the top. That's what you usually do, but here I have wet the paper slightly before I put the paint on. I find it easier to apply paint on wet or damp paper. And here on this petal I do the same thing. The red goes over the top of the yellow, and where the yellow is you can see it's got more of an orange glow. I'll come back later and paint another layer over the top of this. Here on this petal I can see a bit of an orange glow on the right hand side but I forgot to put it on so what I'm going to do now is wet this side of the petal with some water and I'll paint some of the yellow over the top of the quinacridone red. So here I've got some of the yellow on my brush and I paint that on. Now that's not going to be as bright as the other two areas that have got the yellow underneath. I'll show you what it looks like when it dries. I put the water on the paper there to keep the yellow paint edges soft. It's dried now and you can see that area is not as bright as the other areas, but that's okay, I can come back and put some more yellow over the top. This petal over here has got some orange areas on it, so I'm doing the same thing here with the transparent yellow. I'll let that dry completely and then I paint a wash of the quinacridone red over the top. You can see I'm keeping all my colours pale. I will build them up gradually. I won't go too dark too quickly. I can always paint another layer over the top if my painting isn't dark enough, but I can't really take the paint off if I put it on too dark. Now I'm starting to paint that colour on the back petal. You can see how Painting that yellow underneath has given those areas of the petals an orange glow. Here on this petal on the side I've put some yellow underneath. I'm now painting over the top of it. And you can see how beautiful that glows underneath. And here 
here as well. So the two colours I've used here so far have been Transparent Yellow by Winsor & Newton and Quinacridone Red. And they're the only two colours I've used to get to this point. Now I'm starting to build up the colour on the petals. Here I'm using Quinacridone Red again, but I've got more pigment mixed into my mixture. So there's more pigment and a little less water. And you can see how that area glows even more now. I do the same thing here on this one. I've got more pigment in my mixture and I'm layering the paint. I'm building up the colour and I'm leaving the lighter areas light so I'm not putting any paint on them and I'm darkening the darker areas. So here you can see it's starting to take shape. I've built the colour up slowly. I've left the lighter areas showing. And now I'm starting to go even darker in the dark areas. Towards the end of the painting I get some permanent alizarin crimson and I paint that on to make it even darker. When I had finished the flower I mixed some green and I started to paint in the stem and the leaves. Here I started with a light green and I left the glazing until I'd finished the leaves. I layered them with green paint, getting darker and darker in some areas. And then when I finished the leaves, I thought I'd like to go a touch darker in the darkest areas. So what I thought I'd do is glaze some permanent alizarin crimson over the darker areas. I used permanent alizarin crimson on the petals to darken them. So I thought I'd use the same colour down here to glaze over these darker areas. It was a bit of an experiment and I think it worked out okay because I was repeating the colour that I've already used on the petals and it did darken those areas for me. So I'm glazing over permanent alizarin crimson onto the dry green paint. It's altering the colour of the green. It's also altering the value, so it's making it slightly darker. And hopefully it's creating some colour harmony because I've used this colour on the petals. Here on the little unopened tulip down the bottom, I'm glazing a mixture of quinacridone red and the transparent yellow over the top. That makes an orange colour and it's going over the top to change the colours underneath. And here it is finished and look how that paint glows. Here's another painting where I used the technique of glazing. Here I painted some yellow onto the leaves and I let that dry and then I got my green paint out and I started to paint the green over the top of the yellow. And the yellow underneath gave the leaves a beautiful sunlit glow. I only put the yellow underneath the green leaves, I didn't put it underneath the blue leaves. What I can also do with these is take a little bit of paint off with my brush to reveal some of the yellow that's underneath. I take the paint out of my brush and use my damp brush to sop some of the paint back up. That reveals some of the yellow underneath and creates a lovely soft highlight. On my Vishla painting that I did a few weeks ago, I painted some transparent yellow over the top of my finished painting and that helped to give the dog more of a golden glow. So here I've got the watery paint and the paper is dry. A little bit on the ear. See how it changes the colour slightly. All I have to do is watch that everything is completely dry underneath. I put the paint on and then I take the paint out of my brush and use my damp brush to soften any hard edges.
when I paint I do a lot of layering but my work still glows because I use transparent washes over the top of one another and I'm always mindful of allowing the brightness of the paper to show through the paint. I read somewhere that if you're using a lighter colour like yellow you should put the yellow down first because it's not going to cover a darker colour. I take no notice of that. As you saw, I often glaze a transparent yellow over the top of darker colours to make them glow more. The only thing to watch when you do that is that you don't disturb the darker layer underneath. Darker colours are more easily disturbed than lighter colours. They tend to lift off the paper more easily. So if you are glazing over a dark underwash, paint gently and limit your brush strokes. Don't be afraid to experiment with your colours. Make some colour charts up for yourself. Laminate them so that you can keep them for future reference. Most of all, have fun. Watercolour is a magical medium to use, so go off and create some magic. I'm going to be making a full-length tutorial of this painting for my Patreon site. It's going to be a long one because I've got four hours of footage that I have to edit and voice over and I've got others that I have to do before I do this one. So bear with me. Thanks for watching. Please give this video a like and also subscribe to my channel and I will be back next week with a new video for you. Glazing, glazing is a basic skill that all water, watercolorists, you can paint a glaze on a small area of your painting, like that, yeah. When you use a glaze on your entire painting, it can simplify things and it can, can and it can, What I'm going to show you is how I made use of the technique on a small sections, on a small sections of my tulip painting. Be a long one because I've got four hours of footage that I've got to edit, edit. I've got to edit it. So have patience while I edit. So if you're glazing over dark underwash colours, paint gently and limit your brush strokes. Your brush strokes. Limit them. When I paint, I do a lot of layering, but my work still glows because I use... Excuse me.